Greetings everyone, Reverend Redmond Ferry here. I uh, just want to do a video, uh, kind of an instructional type video on light sheeting. I noticed when I first got into insect collecting that there was a bit of a shortage on in-depth detailed instructions on light sheeting, uh, collecting insects with a mercury vapor light or other light source. And um, this is, it kind of bothered me for a while and I've gotten into collecting for a bit now and I've got me a pretty decent little setup, not the best in the world. Uh, needs a lot of improvement I'm sure, but um, I'd like just to try to throw together uh, this little video just to try to get people started to understand more about the process and just what light sheeting is all about. Now here is the actual light sheet setup. Uh, it's really nothing more than a sheet from a bed uh, between, uh, held up, spread out between two poles. Uh, the actual hem of the sheet, you could actually slip a pole through, so found some poles that would go through it. Shoved it through the hem and put it in the ground, and I spread my, that's how I spread my sheet out. Uh, as far as the light itself goes, I have a self-ballasted 160 watt mercury vapor bulb, uh, clear bulb, that I found on Amazon for somewhere around 20 or 30 dollars. Uh, now that is a fairly expensive bulb, but you don't get much better than mercury vapor for collecting insects. I have that set on in a socket that I just had floating around that actually I can actually set this globe over and screw into it to um, to protect it from the rain because one time I did have uh, one of these on a different setup uh, actually it was actually in one of these sockets right here uh, on this stand uh, accidentally let it rain on it and when you get a bulb that's that hot rained on it uh, they have a tendency to shatter and I lost that bulb it was I was not happy. A thirty-something dollar bulb on my budget is pretty rough for me. But um, I sat that on a an old stand that I had sitting around from a broken halogen work light, and that's really all it takes to do the collecting. Now, when the bulb was shattered, I had uh, I went to Walmart and bought one of these tube black lights and that CFL black light that you see over there. I've since added another tube black light, but uh, while I didn't have the the mercury vapor, I used these and even though these are not the professional st uh, type of black lights that entomologists use, uh, they actually serve their purpose quite well. They uh, There was a bit of a drop off in what was available out here with these black lights as compared to the mercury vapor bulb but uh, it wasn't a it wasn't a huge difference uh, and I was still able to collect just using these a uh, ten dollar black light and a five or six dollar CFL black light so I was still able to collect now, uh, something else that I forgot to mention, you do need a ground cloth. Now, mine is horribly inadequate. It really ought to extend out to about right there, you know, uh, out beyond the light a little bit. But um, you do need a ground cloth, because as you can see, um, there are a uh, pretty good diversity of insects down here on the... Oh, that's a beautiful moth right there. I love those guys. I forget what they're called, but uh, there's a beautiful there, there's a beautiful assortment of insects, many cicadas down here. Uh, but a lot of these things do not actually land on the sheet when they get here. They come to the sheet and actually land on the ground. And if you if they're out in the grass, you have a hard time seeing them, and it's it, you can miss a lot of insects. And uh, which leads me to the point that uh, when I've uh, found, yes, it's a little bit of a mess out here. I have found large beetles as far as 10 feet away from the sheet itself uh, under the grass. Uh, Dynastus tidius, I believe is how you pronounce it, the eastern Hercules beetle. And uh, I found a, uh, a Triceratops beetle. Tri tricep ah, 
easy for me to see. Triceratops beetle. I uh, found one of those, but I found it the hard way. I wasn't watching where I was stepping, and I felt something crunch under my under my boot. When I lifted my foot and dug under the grass, I found uh, this very large beetle that I'd never seen before. Like I said, at, after I researched it, I discovered it was a Triceratops beetle. But um, you've got to be careful where you step and actually look in the grass as well as on the sheet and as well as on the back of the sheet. See back here tonight, uh, I don't know if you can see it very well. Let me see if I can get my flashlight trained on it. But uh, there's an, uh, how do you say, Ickles imperialis. I'm not 100% certain of the pronunciation of these things. This is a the imperial moth. It's a male. Um, let me get my hand up there to, uh, it's easy to do with, need three hands for this, but get my hand up there to give you an idea of the size of this guy. Um, this is a male Ickles imperialis, the imperial moth. Uh, I'm very tempted to collect them, but I have plenty of males in my collection. I really need a, one or two females. I'd like to catch one for a specimen and one to uh, collect eggs from. Oh, uh, Kalasomi or something like that. Say, uh, I don't want to touch that guy. They, I don't think they really bite, but they stink something ferocious when they're disturbed and that stench gets on your hands and stays there for quite a while and it's hard to wash off but um that's some of the diversity uh have a sphinx moth here i think oh, i just dropped my flashlight i think it's a um i think it's a catalpa sphinx i'm not 100 percent certain i can't get this to focus in on it in my flashlight doesn't want to work right now. It's got a shortage in it, and I dropped it. Oh, oh, flashlight. Uh, but anyway, I believe that's a Catalpa Sphinx, but I'm not 100% certain. I'm no expert at this. I'm very much an amateur. Um, but uh, like I was saying, this is a pretty simple thing to do. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, very easy setup. Now, as far as uh, conditions for collecting, uh, and where do you collect? Now, you can do this in your own backyard, uh, which is more or less what I do. I actually have a, a back field that I do mine in. I have a series of um, electrical uh, cables run uh, probably 50 yards from my house out into my field to run, <clears throat> to run these uh, lights off of. And uh, I can't show it to you because it's dark and the camera doesn't pick up anything but the darkness, as you can see. But uh, off, I can't even show my hand pointing. Off over that way, uh, just a little ways, is a tree line. And there's a large pecan tree here and a large pecan tree right over here. Well, two or three pecan trees around and another scrub line right over here, or shrub line or whatever you want to call it, however you say it. Uh, but uh, basically what I'm getting at is you have uh, more than one habitat coming together here. You have the woodlands over here and you have all this shrubbery and such right in here and you have this open field that I'm actually sitting in. So this light is attracting from all the all those different areas so that that actually brings in more biodiversity for you to uh, collect from. As far as weather conditions go, um, I've heard it said, <clears throat> I've heard it said and actually seen that uh, hot, humid weather is the um, is the best collecting weather that you can have. Uh, high humidity is probably about 90 percent humidity out here tonight. It's not incredibly hot, but I am sweating a little bit. But it's about 3 o'clock in the morning so as I record this, so the diversity has uh, slacked down a little bit for tonight. But uh, hot, humid weather, uh, very little wind. There's a slight breeze blowing tonight, but it's not enough to really uh, keep the moths and beetles and such from flying. But uh, very little wind, a good still night, and uh, very important is to not have a lot of lights around. Now, uh, you notice uh, when I scanned around, you can see some lights through the tree lines. 
Uh, you can't even see that on the camera, amazing. Huh? But uh, you can see some lights through the tree lines around here, through the trees that grow along the fence line, which that actually probably takes away from my uh, diversity at this sheet a little bit. It's best to be off in the middle of nowhere when you're doing this. Oh boy, I'm running long. Um, But uh, little moon, little to no moonlight, a good cloudy night or a night when the moon doesn't rise till really late or not at all, a new moon or what have you, is excellent for collecting. If you have a bright moon out, you, you can still collect some stuff, but don't expect the uh, diversity that you would get on a very dark night. But uh, really, that's all there is to it. Uh, there's just get you a mercury vapor bulb you can do the cheap setup like I have or you can go buy a ready-made setup for uh, money that I wish I could afford to spend on that but you can do this and you can have you a mercury vapor light sheet setup for uh, very little money well that pretty much wraps it up hold it cat Stop. Well, that pretty much wraps. <laughs> Jesus, cat. I wasn't trying to be mean to you. I just got my camera set up like I want it. Yeah, loon. Jeez. Okay, let's try this again. I'll cut all that out and. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Um, I hope you learned something, and I thank you for watching. And I, I would really love to give a shout out to all the wonderful people over at InsectNet.com, the forum over there. Uh, they really helped me out a lot when I was first getting started. They, when I suggested that uh, I might do this video, uh, quite a few of them chimed in with their tips and ideas, and most of the knowledge that I get, uh, have given in this video actually comes from them, not from myself. I, uh, watch it, cat. I am not, um, I'm, I'm no expert at this. I'm more or less a beginner. This is my first full season actually collecting, so I'm more or less a beginner at this. Uh, all the knowledge that you glean from this video actually comes from them through me. It's not my own knowledge. I just uh, took it from them into myself. So I really want to thank everyone there at InsectNet Forums and again thank you for watching.